Hello goons and gals, Doug here with the Born A Goon channel, also known as Just The Goon. Welcome to today's video where we will take a deep dive look at the Athenia GET ECU for the Honda CRF 450RL. All right, goons and gals, let's get started with today's video where we will showcase the Athena Get ECU for the Honda CRF 450RL. And as some of you can remember, this is part three now of the Super Dual Sport ECU shootout. A couple of weeks ago, I did a back-to-back-to-back -back -back test with this against the AIM, against the Vortex. And this turned out to be the winner. So the question is, is it still the winner? Would I still choose this ECU? Back then, I called it the Incredible Hulk. Is it still the Incredible Hulk? I'm gonna talk about that here in just a second. Also, in that video, I said I would showcase each one of these individually. Last week, I did the AIM. So if some of you are interested in the AIM ECU for the 450RL, that link is down in the description box. Picture's up here in the corner. Feel free to watch that as well. Uh, next up will be the Vortex, but I saved the Vortex for last, obviously, because it's the oldest of the bunch, and there's tons of videos out there on YouTube, but not so much with the Athena Get and the AIM, since they're newer to the market. And I wanted to get those featured first since I've had so many questions. And it's been quite an extensive test. I've used this with the Graves pipe here, the FMF pipe, and the Yost, which is on it. So shameless plug coming up here. Stay tuned on the channel. The pipe shootout should be coming up in the next week or so for the 450RL for anybody that is interested. Also, let me remind you that I don't think it matters if you own a KTM, Husqvarna, Gas Gas, or you're going to buy one of those bikes you're going to probably experience the same results no matter what are the, one of those ECUs. If, you, if the GET works well in the Honda, it's gonna work well in the KTM, it's gonna work well in the Husky, and so on. Uh, so I don't think it necessarily matters about the 450RL. Now speaking of good old Seabiscuit over here, I apologize for his appearance. Nothing is wrong with it, I'm just doing some maintenance, I'm cleaning the filter, rerouting some of these cables for these switches and stuff like that. Wanna change out the exhaust. But on that note, here's what I wanna do. A few, like a month ago, I did this video about how much money I've spent on it. And I said I bought these AS3 uh, Enduro guards. Well, I, you know, I just bought them for the bike. I bought them because I like the way they looked. I had some pretty decent reviews. But just like everyone else, I'm spending my hard-earned money on this stuff. I'm not getting anything in here for free. Anyway, the other day when I was riding, I dumped this, hit a rock right on the sweet spot. Hit it so hard on the other side that it took a chunk out of the end of the bar. Even though I got tusk hand guards on it. The, the lever b broke, even though the guards are on there. We found a way to bust that and the little toggle switch there that has the turn signals and the horn, smashed that thing. Didn't do anything to the radiator. It was all kind of bent out in the plastics and I was like, oh my goodness, I must have really mangled that thing up. No, this piece broke, bent right here. Maybe their philosophy is bend, don't break. But man, that thing hit pretty hard. And I'm taking a few dumps on the other side here. So, hey. These things are pretty good if anybody's looking at that stuff. Just thought I'd give them a shout out. When there's a good product, I want to pass it on to you again. I bought these. I'm not sponsored with them or anything. So let's get down to business here when we talk about Incredible Hulk. And I want to do this from the view as I have done all of these videos. What I feel is what most riders are looking for, and that is convenience and reliability with quality. Every one of these ECUs allows us to make changes that most of us are just simply not qualified for. Even professional level riders. I mean, some of this stuff is just for serious tuning, high professional tuners that not everybody is. For most of us, we're not, and we just want something that's easy to use. And like I said with the AIM, by the way, that video is down there if I didn't say it. If you're going to buy something like this, there's some things that you need to have or you, you don't need to have. First, I'm going to talk about this Wi-Fi. Now, this is something like the AIM switch. It's not a necessity. You can buy it without the Wi-Fi if, if you're tight on money. And some ask, is it a plug and play? It absolutely is. You can plug and play into your stock bike. You can just get this out of the mail, stick it in the bike, take off. You're going to have a lot of fun. If you have a stock pipe, no big deal. It's going to run just fine. If you have modified pipe, fine. If you have a stock header with a can, it's fine. Don't worry about that. All of these are plug and plays. The difference is when you get adjustments in other pipes, it gives you the ability to really tune in the sweet spot depending on where you're riding. So they are plug and play. I'm here in Vegas. I can get this, plug it in, have a good time. You live in Pennsylvania, plug it in, have a good time. You live in Bulgaria, plug it in, have a good time, right? But if you really want to dial it in, all of these give you, to some degree, the ability to simply, I'm going to use air quotes, dial it in on your own. 
And for that, I think this Wi-Fi, like the AIM switch, is a must own if you're gonna do it. Because if you're gonna do it, I think you should do it right. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is something like the TPS. If you ever seen the videos of the Vortex and even the AIM, just to set your TPS and calibrate your ECU. Again, if you don't do it, the bike's still gonna run fine. But if you want more out of your ECU, since you're paying the money, it's not the hardest job in the world with the others. You gotta put a little wire in there, hook it to your battery, hit the switch. I mean, it's not, anybody can do it. But I did say in the AIM video that it's just right there on the cusp where you could, if you're a procrastinator, you could put it off, like I have. So that's something that you have to consider. Here, no problem. You just go into the app, you hit calibrate, boop, it's done. I mean, hey, what else do you want? Now with this map, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, excuse me, with the app, I'm also gonna put Mike from Talking Moto's video down there because I think he did an amazing job explaining every little nook and cranny about the app. And I don't have time to go through all of that. And, and guys, look, I'm a rider. I'm not, uh, I'm not a tuner. I'm not qualified for that. I know a lot about bikes, but not, not, not that much. I'm not an Einstein about everything when it comes to every little detail about this stuff. So if you are, you wanna know about it, watch that video. Again, I wanna talk about what I think is important. So on this app, at the bottom, you have a series of categories. And I apologize for not using it because I'm just using my phone to record this video. But you have like a tuning section, service section, monitor section, and an option section. So when you get it and you hook us up to Wi-Fi, again, you don't need it, but I think it's something that you should have. When you hook it up, you load the maps in. It reads the ECU, puts the maps into a little data center there for you. And those are the maps that you have, maps one and two. Now you also have access to factory maps from Athena with this. This is something I didn't think was possible in the first one. I thought it was just Takamoto apps, but it's not. You can actually put those in and load them if you want to use them. But if you have the switch, which I recommend you get the switch as well, it's like the Vortex, you can switch just between two of the maps. You can, you can toggle between maps one and two. I found Takamoto's maps one and two to be superior to everything else usable for everything that uh, I was needing it for and had no desire need to change it. Now, I couldn't say that about the AIM. I couldn't say that about the Vortex, but this, yeah, it, it was the only one I never even needed to touch. And I think one of the reasons for, again, is this barometric pressure sensor. If you're riding in multiple elevations, like here in Vegas, I think it's 2000 feet or so regularly, but we ride up sometimes 5,000, 6,000 feet, or we go to Mount Charleston, seven or 8,000 feet. You probably are the same wherever you're going up and down mountains if you're dual sporting. This barometric pressure really gives you a crisp, broad range of, of nice fueling no matter where. The way that it processes this is incredible. So in each one of those, you have the ability to make different adjustments to your fueling. Now, this is not a ECU fueling video, but if you think about like the Vortex, you have low, medium, and high adjustment, and you have 10 settings in here. You have settings in this for every single piece of the RPMs, for every quarter turn of the throttle. I mean, whatever your imagination can dream up, which most of us are never even going to walk down this road, you can adjust it with this ECU. But the reason that the app is so nice is because it also has diagnostics. So if you think you're having a problem with your bike and the check engine light is on, it's not like the car where you plug the AutoZone $10 plug-in in there and it tells you your, your codes that they're wrong with your bike. This actually shows the codes on your phone. And again, when it comes to diagnostics, it tells you the air pressure outside, your throttle position, you know, fueling ratios, all of this little nerdy stuff in there. I mean, it's just endless and it's endless and it's endless. And you can share those maps in between others. And I think when you're trying to make adjustments to something, this is the easiest way to do it. It's far easier to use this than it is the AIM switch on your handlebars. It doesn't sound like it is, but it is. And I did mention that the Wi-Fi failed me once, but that's because I got a big clump of mud in the, in the bike. But other than that, it doesn't. You can also keep your maintenance records on your bike. So if you change your oil, adjust your suspension, or whatever log that you want, 
you can always keep a record of that inside of this ECU. And I'll put all these pictures up here on the screen again. If you really want to know how each individual one of those works, visit the video from, from, from Takamoto. It does a lot better job than, than I will be doing with this. So I like that. I think the Wi-Fi is pretty awesome, especially for the riders that do the phone. Like if you're using your phone for a GPS on the mounting, sometimes I use that. Then it's pretty easy. You can just kind of toggle with your ECU. It also allows you to default back to a setting. So let's say that you take one of those maps and you adjust it and it's crap. Your bike is running like hell. And you're like, oh gosh, I messed up my ECU. All you gotta do is push a button. You're back to square one. You're back to the maps that you had before. You can take the Athena maps, you can move them in there, use them, play around with them. So you can just kind of mess around with this app as much as you want. Now, whether you choose to do it, which I don't think most people will, they're looking for a little bit more convenience of that, but it's there if you need it. And I think the highlights are the TPS adjustment, being able to adjust pieces of your fueling, little tiny adjustments to high-low if you get some bad fuel somewhere. You have that ability if you're confident enough to do that. You can always revert back to the default, plus the maintenance service logs that you can keep inside of this and everything else that goes with that. Uh, logs of your motorcycle, trouble codes, all of that stuff makes this worth it. And it's not necessary, like I said, but you should get it if you're, if you're going to get it. And plus it comes with a map switch and everything else. I feel that's a good benefit and probably the most user-friendly out of all of them. So when we go back and we look at that shootout, for those that are remembering or have ECUs, you look at the Vortex, you have choices between two of those maps. Now, it's not the biggest deal breaker. I'm just pointing out little subtleties here. But if you want to adjust it again, you have to pull off your seat. So you have to stop your bike, undo your seat, get a screwdriver, try it, put the seat back on, bolt it up, ride. Oh, I don't like that. Stop your bike, pull it off, you know, dial down. It takes you a long time to reach that epic level of, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect for me. You put a pipe, then you got to go through the whole process again. You want to experiment, you go through the whole process again. The AIM has the bar switch, which makes that easier because with that one, you can toggle through it. But I mentioned it's not so easy to use. I find it's, you can't use it or I can't use it while I'm riding and I'm pushing. It's not as easy as an adventure bike. So I have to stop, push it and go. Stop, push it and go. But I don't have to take my seat off or use a screwdriver. So that's better than the Vortex. This is another level because I just do it right there on the phone and while I'm writing, okay, I like this. It's connected well, it works well, it's user-friendly and that's a major plus. And I say it's, it's not a deal breaker, but where I say it's a major plus is if you're really testing, you put a new pipe, you want ultimate, you can do it. You're riding through higher elevations. Hey, let me just, let me put a little more top in here. A little sputter, let me put a little top in. I'll add a little more power here, add a little more power there. You can do it. Oh, this bike runs like hell. Hit back to default, you're on. I mean, it's really just the ECU for dummies, right? It's like connected to your, to your brain. Even I can use it. But none of this matters because let's go back and visit the most important thing at the Goon because there's only one test that ever counts. You know where I'm going with this, guys. That's right. The tried and true butt dyno. The butt dyno does not lie. That's what we're really here for. How does it feel, man? How does it feel? I still got the stuff up from here, so if this is your first time watching the video, here's the stock power band, here's the Vortex, here was the AIM, and we got Incredible Hulk up here. And the last, when I did the AIM, I said it has lots of torque, but it tapers off here. I'm gonna call this something else. We got the Incredible Hulk, but let's call it the three stroke, yeah. So for some of you old timers, not even old timers, lovers of the two bangers, right? The two smokers, right? You know how that two stroke, we, that's what we love about it, right? Not like, beep, 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 not that, not the, beep. that's awesome. But that power band, right? When you, beep, beep, right? And it takes off. That's like, wow, it's a, a rush. That's what makes them so awesome, right? Well, the 450 RL is a four stroke, but this power, feels like it's a like it's a three stroke like a speed triple or something right you got really good really good torque out of this maybe not as much as you do with the AIM that I feature but it's pretty damn good way better than the vortex hell's a lot better than than the stock no question 
So if you do a first quarter turn of throttle, it'll put water in your eyes, you know, hair on your chest, even if you're a female. When you get to the mid range, this is just next level. It comes on like it's two stroke. You better be holding on to your motorcycle when you crack her about half. When you get that thing in about half, you better be holding on, squeezing tight, or you're gonna fall off the back. And you better have your chin strap on too, because your helmet's gonna come off. This thing has enormous amounts of mid-range. And just like I had mentioned in the first one, it does not stop. It just keeps on going. As far as you turn that throttle, it just keeps on going. And it just keeps on going. And it's like, I don't know, it feels like RPM 30,000. That's total bogus. I'm making that up as an exaggeration, obviously. But it certainly feels like, it's just nuts. <laughs> Man, it's got so much middle. Like, like, yeah, nice. Three stroke, it's got three stroke style power. Much more than you will get from the AIM Vortex. Hell of a lot better than the stock. Crisp, clean, no jerk, no stall, no flame out. The fueling on this is by far better than every single one of those. And again, I think that's because of the barometric pressure uh, sensor, excuse me. So when we're looking at these and we're comparing those real quick, that's what really stands out about this, the processor unit and the sophistication of it. You, you are getting what you pay for here. It's not the cheapest, it's the most expensive and it's the most expensive for a reason. It's the most sophisticated using incredibly sophisticated hardware, just like your computer or your phone. The more hard, you know, the, every series or newer one is better than the older one. It's faster, it's quicker, it's more responsive. And both the AIM and the GET are far more responsive. The Vortex is a great unit, awesome unit. But these are better because they're more advanced, more responsive. And if you're paying that money, you might as well get what is the best. The difference that separates this from the AIM and why it is the winner, and what I say it is the winner, it's still the winner, in my opinion, because of that. It always feels like it knows what you want to do. So before I get into that, there's two maps in this one, primary. You have map number one, which is a full power map. And then you have map number two, which is an enduro map. The enduro map cuts power. It's kind of the same that you get with the regular one. It's just, let's say you have a 450, you have a 300 now, right? Uh, after riding it more, it's an awesome one. Comparing it to AIM's enduro, maybe we need a little, I think we can put a little bit more power. I've sent that feedback in. I think we could use just, just a tiny bit more, not a touch more, but it's a good map. It's really clean, very crisp for those enduro single track riders. It's really nice. And if you're on the stock Honda, it's, it's, it's a really hard bike to ride on trails because that jerky throttle like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And there's flame outs, right? It's, it's the same. No flame outs, no stalling, no jerkiness. No abruptness that isn't welcome. Like when it's abrupt, it's just a, a nice, exuberant, uh, amazing feel with this. So I'm just kind of thinking here, have I, have I left anything out? Because I was thinking I left something out for a second that I wanted. To, oh, yes, yes, traction control. This one has traction control just like the others. Now to me, the AIM has the easiest traction control because you can push the button. It's tough to get into the traction control panel, but you can adjust five levels of it. You cannot adjust traction control with the Wi-Fi, which totally sucks. If there's going to be a negative, that, that, that sucks that you're paying that money for the Wi-Fi and not getting the traction control. This is Athena's way of making you buy the damn traction control knob. So buy the traction control knob. I don't believe there's any set in the map one. It's just a free bike, pump gas, everything your bike has to offer. Let it breathe freely and roam like a sea biscuit that it is. Map 2's detuned version that will slow the bike down. It has, I think, level 10 traction control, which is the max. I will say one thing about it. It is damn hard to beat that traction control. What you can do that I mentioned in my last one, the chuggability of this ECU for the trail rider, the tight woods rider, the sloppy rider, I'm tired at the end of the day. This thing just chugs along and it, it's, it's unbelievable what it can do on a hill. Like you can just walk up the hill like your trials riding. Just, just take your good old time, 
just like a tractor. It just keeps on grinding, grinding, and, and grinding, and grinding away. So in a review here, in my opinion, it is still the best ECU. It's leaps and bounds better than stock. It's better than the Vortex. The AIM is close as you can get to it, but depending on what kind of rider you are, which I explained in the AIM video, depends on what kind that you choose. There's just more features in this one for me, since we're already spending a thousand bucks for this. It has a better, broader, usable power than the AIM. The AIM is a lot of torque, very short power band. So you're shifting a little bit more with it. That's fun. And certain times they're like wheelie, but not like this thing can't wheelie either. Your bike will wheelie practically in fourth with this thing. It's monstrous power, probably more power than all of them. But that mid range is, is psychotic. It's like ludicrous speed. Like it's a three stroke. You crack that bad boy and, and it is off. I mean, it is off, off, off. You're going, you know? Uh, so if you're in a wheel stand, you get it about right here, you like drop your elbow and your bike is, is like at one o'clock. You're going back the other way. It is nasty, nasty fast. And it just keeps on going. On the highway for the adventure riders, those that are doing really dual sporting BDRs and you're doing some track with that. When I say track, you're doing some street riding with that. You don't have that 50 mile per hour lurch that you had with the AIM. I'm working on getting that out of the way. I got some test settings coming up for that here soon. I think we fixed that problem, but this doesn't have it. Top speed, like when you're at 70, 80 miles an hour, which is not necessarily how fast you want to go on these, but it feels pretty good even with dirt bike tires on this bike. The Vortex feels like the engine is 65, 70, like you're, wind, like you're in a higher rev range. Like it's, you, you can feel like, okay, it's dragging a little. The AIM is fast, but you get this little lurch, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but after you're sitting there paying attention to it, you're like, what, what is that? This thing feels like it just goes, when you're in 70 into 80, it just feels like this bike will go a hundred. I don't think a Honda will, but you feel like, is this bike going to stop? Like if and, and, and it doesn't feel, it feels good there. Like it's smooth. It's clean, crisp. It feels really, really good at the high ranges. So. For, for that reason, I still make it the winner because it fits everybody. If you are a motocross rider, it's just going to give you heaps more of power everywhere you can. It's got very responsive power for whoops, jumps, and everything like that. Dual sport riders that are doing uh, technical terrain, you've got that. You've got good responsive power, strong mid-range, easy to clear obstacles. Hard enduro riders, easy to launch above rocks. Easy to clear obstacles, easier to clear, I shouldn't say easy, but easy to hill climb, even in loose terrain. I've tested loose terrain, sandy terrain, dune riding. It's amazing with that mid-range. It really winds itself out, but it's better than all of them on the road. So for all the BDR riders that are doing a lot of extreme trail, and then you're plugging away 50, 60 miles to a hotel or down the street, or you're hitting some patches of street, it is a really good ECU for that too. So based on those, to me, it still has the, the win. Now to answer a couple of those questions, I think I am answering the most important ones as I wrap up this video. Is it a plug and play? Yes. You will be satisfied even if you just plug it, even if you don't even calibrate it. You want to calibrate it, obviously. But just plug it in. Plug it in. In the first video that I did when I rode my first impressions with this, was on the stock pipe. It runs good in the stock pipe. And one thing on that, when I put the Graves, the FMF, and the Yosh on it, there was a little bit of D-cell popping, just a little bit of there. Now, obviously with this, you can mask that through the fueling if you wish to. It's not a big deal, and you know, maybe kind of sounds cool to some people, but that's present with the modified exhausts. I did experience that. Some asked me if I did, answer is yes, with all three exhausts. Less with the Graves, ton more with the FMF, a little bit less with the Yosh, but to me, that's not a big deal. Bikes do that from time to time. And the performance that you're getting, one day I'll probably sit down and try to iron that out, but it's not really that, that important to me. Uh, and that's, as I, more I ride, it seems to go away. However, it didn't do that on the stock pipe. Stock pipe with the stock can on it, it doesn't do that at all. 
In, in fact, I think it runs really damn good on the stock. You would even question as to whether or not you, you, you'd you get a pipe. Like It really runs good with the stock format, even though the stock is much heavier. So it is a plug and play like that. Uh, some ask me if, if you had an AIM, should you upgrade? If you have a Vortex, should you upgrade? That's a tough call because money is, is tight for some people. And I would say it depends on how much bankroll you have and what you're trying to accomplish. All of them do a great job. Uh, obviously, if you have a Vortex and you want something else, you've had some trouble with it, is it worth? Yes, yes it is. They're way better. Both the AIM and this, way better. You, you should if you can, if you want to. Is it like the worst thing in the world where your buddies are going to laugh at you? No. Make up for it with your writing skills. If you bought an AIM, I would just keep the AIM because it's unique in its own character. I even battle sometimes with myself as much as I love this one. When I put the AIM, that torque, I said it in my last video, it's just addicting. I mean, it drives you crazy how much cool it is. It's just like, and I think if you're doing something like racing supermoto where you're launching out of corners and the tracks are short and you're not really spending a lot of time up in your high speed ranges, and even if you were, you're like, whatever, uh, it's pretty fun. But this is just so damn good everywhere. Like I said before, it feels like this thing is connected to your brain. And the more that you ride, the more that you get tired, the more that you get sloppy, it feels as if this ECU masks your inability to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> and that's what a real modification does. Like you put a modification on there and some of them are a waste of money, right? Like sometimes you like put a pipe on there. It's like, is a couple of horsepower gonna help you ride better? Or is it just making a better sound? Does it look cooler? What are you spending money for? And there's very few things in the world that make, uh, make you better rider. You know, tires, suspension, ECU. Like these are mods that a rider makes that changes your riding. And the thing is when you're riding your bike, you, you ride it long enough if it's bad, you just get used to it being bad. You just grow accustomed to it until you, something else comes along. Like I rode on the Vortex first a lot, and then this comes along, it's like, whoa, 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 you know? And that's what I think in, in closing is the very best part about this ECU. Whatever they got going on, whatever you could do with the map, whatever you could do with the switches, whatever it's called, throw all that away. The way it makes you feel on a bike, at least for me, is next level. The smile it puts on your face is double the smile you get from anything else. It inspires you to ride, ride faster, ride harder, but feel better doing it. It makes you better because you're just feeling the obstacles are no longer a problem. Things that you say, I would not do that on a stock bike. I'll do that. I mean, I was climbing hills. I still got the stock tires on this here. I didn't feel like the get, the get made me want to do stuff like that. And that's, that, I don't think you, you can ask for anything anything else. So guys, that's all I got for you today. The Incredible Hulk is still the winner, although the AIM is very close. But no matter what ECU, there are the best things that you can do for your dual sport. If you want to ask me any more questions, I think I got them all answered here. It is a plug and play. It works with any bike that you have. Work with any exhaust that you have. If you don't have to get this if you don't want to, it will help you. You can buy it and buy it later if you want to do it in partials. It's still better than all the ECUs if you didn't get the Wi-Fi. If you didn't have the Swift, you just plug it in and run it on a stock bike. It's still better than every other ECU out there. And it's the winner because I think it fits more people, more riding styles, more types of terrain overall for those that are doing BDRs and everything else in between. You want to take your bike to motocross track. You want to do hard enduro. You want to do wood single track. You want to do rocky single track. You want to do sand dunes. You want to ride to the top of a mountain. You want to ride across Europe. The GET. The GET will serve you the whole way and it gets better fuel economy than all of them. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. As always, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your opinions on anything. Let me know your experiences. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer any questions that I can for you. As always, I say with every video, no matter what I said in today's video, is just my opinion. It's my opinion only in hell I might be wrong.